Proverbs or what is that called? Psalms. Okay, because I looked at it and I went, what? I only have two readings. Okay, all right. I, I read it and I tried to research it in my living Bible. Yeah, she did. Yeah, but I, I like to read. Blessed New Year to all of you. Today we celebrate the Epiphany because Epiphany is this Thursday, January 6th, and by Sunday Jesus is a grown man. So uh, we have to uh, do this. Jesus has to grow up very quickly. We have decided we are not going to sing today uh, because of these uh, surging of numbers with the Omicron. We'll just keep our our particles to ourselves. Uh, responses, spoken responses are okay, but the uh, vocalizing for song uh, brings out a little bit more of, out of us. So here in this space, we invite you to meditate on the words in your bulletin for our opening hymn, which those of you at home can sing aloud, Angels from the Realms of Glory. you to stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, 
Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father of Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it is the coastland far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. The Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him they shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will return their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and the people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians. Blessed be the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is immeasurable greatness of his power? For us who believe the word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. In the days leading up to New Year's, there were an increasing number of bomb blasts going off in the neighborhoods around where I live. It seemed quite clear that this year, people were getting ready for a blast of a New Year's Eve. 2021 had not been the year we thought it was going to be, and there seemed to be a lot of pent-up enthusiasm for blasting 2021 away and making a big statement in ushering in 2022. But when Friday came, it was wet, 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 all day. And it's pretty much continued ever since. We've had a steady washing and greeting this new year. On Friday, the rain would clear for a bit now and then, and someone would set off a few firecrackers and then the rain would come down again in sheets. By that evening, it seemed unlikely that the rain would stop and that those stockpiled fireworks probably weren't going to serve their purpose in getting rid of 2021. But as midnight approached, at least where I live in town, the rain ceased, the sky cleared, and as the clock struck midnight, people were ready. The sky lit up with fireworks from Waikiki to Manoa and from Makiki to Diamond Head and beyond. Huge aerials in a potpourri of colors shooting upwards and exploding all over the neighborhoods. And people had a lot of them. It went on and on, well past the completion of the official show in Waikiki. To tell you the truth, generally, I'm more like my dog and feel the anxiety of a war zone when I hear all those fireworks going off. But this year, it seemed like a collective and exuberant embrace of hope 
as we close the door on 2021 and looked ahead to 2022. Then in a nod to the sermon I needed to write, I began to consider how confusing it would have been for the wise men if they had been traveling on a night like that, with all those colorful stars in the sky, trying to discern which one they were supposed to follow, for they were popping up all over the place. In our Christmas story of Jesus' birth, Matthew is the only gospel that tells us about the Magi these wise men from afar, who, as seers of the stars, noticed a most unusual star bright in the sky and discerned that a king had been born. There had been prophecies in the Jewish scriptures to support this. In the book of Numbers, we read that a star shall come forth out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. In the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah spoke of those from afar bringing gold and frankincense. And the prophet Micah specifically said that one who was to rule Israel would come from the clan of Bethlehem. So these wise men left their distant lands to follow that star and found the baby Jesus. Overwhelmed with joy, important men that they were notwithstanding, they knelt and paid this baby homage, presenting their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is a powerful story in Matthew's Gospel because from the very beginning of the Gospel, it announces that this child, born into the Jewish world, was to be a child for all nations, for all people. Hence, we get Jesus' command at the end of the Gospel, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. But underneath this story of these magi, who complement our crush scene so richly with its shepherds, barn animals, and now these wise men from afar, there is an undercurrent that we often gloss over. It's part of the story we hesitate to tell our kids, but it is very much a part of the story of this birth of Jesus. These wise men went first to Jerusalem. Why wouldn't they? That was the seat of power. And it was there that King Herod had his palace. And they were, after all, looking for a king born king of the, a child born king of the Jews. Who better to consult than King Herod? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Observed his star at its rising? Come to pay him homage? Herod and all Jerusalem, we are told, were frightened by what these wise men said. Herod was a complicated figure. He struck both awe and terror in people. Awe because he had overseen massive building projects that greatly transformed the infrastructure of the region, including the initiation of a stunning rebuilding of the Second Temple. But with that came massive costs and steeply increased taxes on a working population that was being squeezed. And more than that, he was grossly obsessed with power and hyper paranoid to keep it to the point of being absolutely brutal. He killed hundreds of public officials along with three of his sons and one of his wives when he became convinced that they were disloyal to him. It is no surprise, then, that Herod heard the wise men's inquiry as an imminent threat and that the people were afraid of what he might do. Feigning devotion, he ordered the Magi to find the child and to return to him to reveal what they learned about this child so that he, too, could go to pay him homage. Whether the wise men realized they needed to be wary of Herod or not, once they found Jesus, they received a warning in a dream not to return to him. Our lectionary reading ends there, ominous enough as it is. But what happens next is one of the greatest tragedies in the Bible. When Herod realized that the wise men had left the country by another way, he was enraged. 
and ordered all children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under to be killed. Consider that when thinking about our world today. All children two and under to be killed in a crazed attempt to rid the world of an infant he perceived as a threat to his power. In the church calendar, we give remembrance to this horrific part of the story on December 28th, the day called the Holy Innocence. But because that day seldom falls on a Sunday, many are unaware of this tragic part of the story of Jesus' birth. The only reason Jesus survived is because an angel in the night appeared to Joseph, telling him to take Mary and Jesus and to flee to Egypt at once, making Jesus and his parents refugees, like so many in our world today. In this world, there have been and always will be powers that are resistant to good, that chase after power and are willing to stop at nothing to claim it and to keep it. But as one of the saints of this modern world, Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said, justice, goodness, love, compassion must prevail. And as we heard in the Christmas reading from John's Gospel, Jesus was the light that came into the world, a light no darkness can overcome. Archbishop Desmond Tutu knew all about the dark and light of this world and the joy alongside it when one follows in the way of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, in a simple, unvarnished wooden coffin, with rope handles. He was laid to rest with the humility he requested in death and with which he lived in life. Awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984, he was persistent and fearless in opposing apartheid in his home country of South Africa. He described the situation thus. We, the black South Africans, had the land And they, the white missionaries who came, had the Bible. Then they said, let us pray, and we closed our eyes. When we opened them again, they had the land, and we had the Bible. Maybe, he said with his usual twinkle in his eye, we got the better end of the deal. And indeed, it was his Christian faith faith that comes alongside evil and struggle and prevails, that gave him the courage to relentlessly campaign throughout the world for sanctions against the injustices of the South African apartheid regime, and while at home, to preside over dozens of funerals of young activists killed over the years of the struggle. When apartheid finally ended, Nelson Mandela tapped Tutu to lead the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a revolutionary process of truth-telling in an effort to reach unity and reconciliation following decades of atrocities during the apartheid war. In the decades since then, he continued to speak out against corruption and inequality wherever he saw it and spoke boldly for the care of God's creation calling out climate injustice. It's been recognized that many artistic renderings of that first Christmas show the star shining in the night with a distinctive cross-like shape. Whether intentional or not, that's a very appropriate symbol of what is ahead for this child. The betrayal and rejection that led to death on a cross seemingly a snuffing out of that light which had come into the world. But of course, that is when the great reversal occurred. For it was God 
who defeated the power of darkness in a way that no human could have imagined or deemed possible. Death becoming the portal to new life and forgiveness and mercy, the assurance of new beginnings made possible again and again and again. T.S. Eliot's famous poem, Journey of the Magi, is sometimes interpreted as a dismal resignation to death. But T.S. Eliot wrote that shortly after a conversion experience that led him to the Anglican faith. In the poem, he artfully dispels the romance of the journey of the Magi, setting forth the challenges they surely faced. The cold of winter, the dearth or dirt of shelter, the lack of sleep, the inferior quality and quantity of food before finally finding the child. Then looking back upon this memory, he has the wise men say, all this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again, but set down, this, set down, this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. I had seen birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. We return to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods I should be glad of another death. That longing for death is sometimes interpreted as resignation or depression. The former lives of these magi, seers of the stars, were no longer needed or valid. Their very personhood changed by this encounter with the Christ child. And yet, that is precisely what gives us hope as Christians. The struggles of this world do not eclipse the joy of being a child of God. God's work in our lives will lead us in new directions, and the wrong turns we take will not resign us to eternal wandering in darkness. The power struggles we encounter in this world will be overcome, and death is not to be feared. The justice goodness, love, and compassion of which Archbishop Desmond Tutu spoke will prevail because God has come alongside us into the darkest corners of our humanity. When the Magi set out on their journey, they were following one star to God's light that had entered this world in the person of Jesus, God's Son, who had a mission to bring the good news of God's justice, goodness, love, and compassion to all people, and along with it, the assurance not to lose heart, not to lose courage, for the light has come alongside the darkness and will never be overcome. The bonds of death have been broken, and new life is real in this life and into eternity. Like all those colorful aerials Friday evening, shooting up from unexpected darkened places, lighting the night sky in a flash, we no longer need to search for that one star. For the light of Christ is everywhere, in us and around us. Sometimes that light appears in unexpected ways, in unexpected places to lighten our darkness. And other times, God uses us to bring light to darkened places, as God did in ways we all recognized in the life of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, a witness to God's light and presence that is with us always, wherever we go, and through whatever we encounter, even death. And that make stepping into 2022 truly hope-filled. Amen.
Thank you, Manny, for that beautiful music reflection. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed printed on page four of your bulletins or on your screen at home. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers this morning are from Form 4 in the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Bob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Anglican Church of Congo. And in the Dawson cycle of prayer, we pray for the most Reverend Michael Bruce Curry, presiding bishop, and Mrs. Sharon Curry. For all who serve God in the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Honolulu and the islands of Hawaii, for every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
Let us share a touchless peace with one another. We have just a few announcements today. Uh, we are not having, we decided to have coffee hour once a month on the first Sunday of the month. We're not having coffee hour today because of the, this Omicron surge. So postponed, hopefully by next, uh, the first Sunday in February, we'll be able to uh, gather again for a coffee hour. This uh, Thursday is, as I said, the day of Epiphany. So our Jazz Vespers will be an Epiphany Jazz Vespers this Thursday at six o'clock. Uh, you can find the links online on the website or on our Facebook page uh, or come in person. Bible study is this Wednesday by Zoom. Let me know if you would like the links. We look at the lessons for the coming Sunday. Uh, I will be on vacation. I'm leaving after Jazz Vespers on Thursday and will be gone through the 13th. So no Bible study on the 12th. Um, Father Frank will be with us next Sunday. Uh, Father Frank Chun. So thank you to Father Chun. Our pledging is going very well. Um, if you haven't turned in your pledge cards yet, you still can. We welcome them. Our challenge this year is, again, the loss of the Watabe uh, rental income. So, but we are really, really uh, grateful to this congregation for its faithfulness. Uh, and the vestry continues to do its budget work for 2022. We continue to collect uh, travel size hygiene products for Wally House uh, at St. Elizabeth's, the houseless ministry. We have a few birthdays this week. Uh, Trisha Matsumoto has a birthday tomorrow. Ashlyn Kim, our Epiphany baby, has a birthday on Thursday. And Jason Barroza has a birthday on Saturday. So let us pray for Trisha, Ashlyn, and Jason. Um, the birthday prayer is printed in your bulletins on page six, and it'll be on the screen for those of you at home. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Trisha, Ashlyn, and Jason, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's been great to have Ashlyn home from college over this holiday, her freshman year uh, in Portland, over in Portland. She is returning on Friday, the day after her birthday. So let us pray for her. And also, Konstantinos and Keisha are returning on Saturday from Greece. So let us also remember them in our prayers. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular Ashlyn, Konstantinos, and Keisha. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to enjoy a musical interlude by Dr. Dr. Epping, while I go and wash my hands in preparation for Eucharist.
I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intended for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of your true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray as Christ has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to be seated. I will come to you. Just place out your palm to receive the bread, and when I return, we will all share together.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. You may remain seated for the post-communion prayer. I invite you to join with me. Page eight in your bulletin and on the screen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Be safe, everyone.